open source software is increasingly popular. Unfortunately, this has led to a rise in fake open source software. The software itself isn't fake, it's real and often popular software. The fake part is that it isn't open source by the usual definition. But this hasn't stopped companies from just slapping the label on their software anyway, or presenting it in a way that leads people to believe it is open source. If you're using something thinking it's open source when it's not, you might land yourself in real trouble. To be clear, every copyright owner has the right to choose whatever license or licenses that they want to use with their intellectual property. You might not like their choice, but it is their choice. This does not mean that it's okay to mislead people though. I'll name a few examples as I go. This is not to single out specific organizations as being worse than others. I'm choosing examples to illustrate different ways in which software can be misrepresented as open source and could catch you out. Before I do that, I should make it clear that I am not a lawyer, and what I'm presenting here is my opinion, not legal advice. Arse covered, let's start with Meta, aka Facebook. I keep seeing articles about how great Meta's open source Llama large language model is, but there's a problem. Llama isn't open source. Meta keeps saying it, people keep repeating it, but just saying something doesn't make it true. Of course, me saying that it's not doesn't make it untrue either. If only there was some kind of definition we could use to decide if something was open source or not. Something like, say, the open source definition, which I'll link in the description. Just to be clear about this, the open source initiative who maintains this definition doesn't have any legal claim over the words open source. They didn't invent open source. Their authority doesn't come from legal ownership. Rather, it comes from major open source companies, world governments, and the open source community collectively saying, yep, this is the definition we agree with. The OSI can't force you to agree with it, I can't force you to agree with it. But when a definition exists, and that definition is recognized across the industry and around the world, if you're going to use this name in a way that doesn't match the generally accepted definition, then even if it's okay from a legal perspective, the only interpretation I can draw is that you intend to mislead people. I just cannot see a good faith argument for doing it. Back to Meta and why their Llama is not open source, according to the open source definition. Open source does not simply mean that your code is on the internet. It is largely about freedom, the freedom to view, change, and redistribute software. The open source definition outlines the requirements to be considered open source in the sense that most of us understand it. Of note, you must not discriminate against people, groups, or fields of endeavor. Llama's license requires you to adhere to an acceptable use policy that explicitly disallows a list of groups and fields of endeavor. Granted, a lot of these disallowed uses are pretty distasteful to say the least. I'm not trying to advocate for human traffickers here, but I have a feeling they don't care much about your acceptable use policy either. Not everything on this list is illegal. There's some stuff that Meta just doesn't want you doing. Like you're not allowed to use it with transportation or heavy machinery. This is not open, it's more like a jar. There are also the commercial terms of the license whereupon your rights are automatically revoked if your software picks up too many monthly users. So it's open unless you're really successful with it, in which case it's not open anymore. This is called having your cake and eating it meta. Open source, but only if you use it the way we want you to use it, and only if we get to cap your potential success is not open source, so stop saying it. Moving on, we need to talk about the SSPL, the server-side public license. This has drawn a bit of controversy in recent years, as numerous formerly open source companies have dropped OSI approved licenses in favor of the SSPL. Critics have referred to this as open washing, open source, or just a good old bait and switch. For what it's worth, I don't believe companies like MongoDB, Greylog, Elastic, or Redis originally set out with the intention of pulling a bait and switch in the future, I think they just reached a point where they felt they had to choose between standing by their open source principles and commercial success. They chose the latter. Whether that's right or wrong for a company to do, I shall leave you to argue about in the comments. Where I will weigh in with my opinion is that I believe presenting the SSPL in a way that encourages confusion that could trick people into thinking it is open source is not okay. The SSPL is not open source. What it is, was an attempt to weaponize open source, but I'll come back to that. The SSPL was created by MongoDB. They did initially submit it to the OSI for open source approval, but for reasons that will hopefully become clear, it did not get approved. 
So are MongoDB the bad guys here? Are they out there calling the SSPL open source even though the OSI didn't approve it? No. If we look at their FAQ, there is definitely some resentment coming through, but they clearly say that MongoDB software licensed under the SSPL is not considered open source by the OSI. Sure, they try to convince us that it maintains all of the same freedoms the community has always had with MongoDB, which I don't agree is true, but anywhere the phrase open source is used, it's in the context of the OSI said no. This is okay, I don't think it's misleading, so what's the problem? MongoDB may have created the SSPL, but others have since adopted it. Let's look at Elastic's use of the SSPL. Their FAQ says the SSPL has not been approved by the OSI, so to avoid confusion, we do not refer to it as an open source license. Good start, but Elastic does make frequent use of the phrase free and open. I have a bone to pick with that, because if you call your software free and open, you're sitting a bit too close to the familiar FOSS acronym free and open source software, and I don't think that's an accident. If we look at what Elastic means by free and open, the free means their products can be used at no cost. This is not what the free and free and open source means. It means free as in freedom, not price. Elastic says free and open, not free and open source. If there's a line here, then they're making sure they're on the right side while walking up very close to it. They're not technically wrong by the commonly accepted OSI definition of open source, because they're not using the phrase open source. They do say open code instead. The bottom line though is that I've seen this confuse people into thinking it's open source. And if Elastic's wording isn't set out to encourage this, I don't think it's set out to discourage it either. Their wording, however, is at least clearer than Greylogs. To be fair, Greylogs is better now than it was in the past, but that's not saying much. Greylogs history is similar to that of MongoDB and Elastic. It was open source, then it switched to the SSPL. Let's look at their post in the matter. Is the SSPL an OSI recognized open source license? The SSPL has not been approved by the OSI. Okay, that's clear-ish. Scroll down a bit. This SSPL will apply to Greylog open source. That's right, the product they licensed under the SSPL, the license that neither the OSI or its creators call open source, they were calling that product Greylog open source. For a little while, they did rename it to Greylog Open instead, and they seem to have adopted the same free and open terminology that Elastic uses. The problem is that if Elastic walked right up to that line, Greylog are leaning so far over the line, it would take a lawyer to figure out which side they're actually on now. Look at how their homepage describes Greylog Open, built to open source standards. It doesn't explicitly say it's open source, read it again. It says built to open source standards. Technically, if we're not going to be picky about which standards or how many of them, one could say Microsoft Windows is built to open source standards. It gets worse though. Let's click on the Greylog Open page. Built as an open source project. Surely any normal person reading built as an open source project on the Greylog Open website is going to think it means Greylog Open is an open source project. No, what it means is we built it as an open source project then we changed our minds, and now it's not open source, but a previous version that went end of life years ago used to be open source. I mean, come on, how are people not supposed to misunderstand that? This is genuinely how I believe Greylog would stand behind the wording built as an open source project. As incredulous as it seems to me, I think they think it's okay because technically it's past tense and they didn't say when. It's consistent with their post about Elasticsearch. In 2021, Elastic, the company responsible for the Elk stack, shifted from an open source software licensing model to a server-side public license model, changing the costs associated with the software. Elasticsearch continues to offer a free and open source based product. They shifted from open source to not open source, but it's based on something that originally was open source, even though it's not anymore. This is Greylog's logic as far as I can tell. Am I overreacting here? Did everyone else read that and immediately understand that built as an open source project doesn't mean it's an open source project? Not some of the people I've run into in the real world, that's for sure. Not the rest of YouTube by the look of things. Getting started with open source log management. The best open source logging tool. It's not. And look, if you haven't watched Tom's channel, he's a big advocate for open source 
and he clearly uses Greylog. So if he didn't notice that Greylog dropped the open source license years ago, how on earth is your average Joe supposed to realise that built as an open source project doesn't mean it's an open source project? Look, I don't want to put words into people's mouths, so I'll tell you my loud opinion on why the SSPL is not open source. You know, apart from both the OSI and its creators saying so. Remember that thing about not discriminating? Well, oh boy, the SSPL discriminates. It directly targets people who make the functionality of the program or a modified version available to third parties as a service. In other words, cloud or hosting providers. MongoDB's FAQ clarifies that this does not apply if you provide it as a service internally within your own organization. It is specifically targeting, or should I say discriminating against, cloud providers. It may draw comparisons to the AGPL in as much as it attempts to close some perceived loopholes related to cloud providers. The difference is that the AGPL applies its rules equally to everyone. The SSPL has a specific list of rules that only apply to third-party service providers. And those rules, by the way, are insane. Why would they do this? Because MongoDB and all the companies I've mentioned who have adopted the SSPL are commercial for-profit entities, and they make money by selling their software as a cloud service. When it was truly open source, this meant other cloud providers, cough Amazon, could simply copy paste the code, spin up their own cloud service, and compete against them without any of the burden to develop or maintain the software themselves. If you're competing against Amazon, while you have to shoulder the development costs of both yours and Amazon's product, and probably pay Amazon to use their platform to deliver your service, that is not a level playing field. So honestly, I am sympathetic. I know I'm glossing over the fact that there are other contributors who have poured time and talent into the software only to the license switch rep respectively. Absolutely a valid concern, absolutely a problem, but that would be a whole other video. The bottom line is these companies felt forced into a choice between profitability and openness, and that's what led to the SSPL. That's why the SSPL takes specific aim at cloud providers. It's an attempt to have some kind of open access to code whilst blocking competition through the copyright owner's commercial products. Or perhaps I should say blocking unfair competition. You can of course write your own software from scratch, nobody's stopping that. Now, I mentioned that the SSPL's special cloud targeted rules were insane, so it's time to justify that. You know how the open source definition says you can't insist that all other programs distributed on the same medium must be open source software? Well, the SSPL goes a lot further than that. If you provide SSPL software as a service, then it requires you to cough up source code to anyone who accesses the service. That's a bit like the AGPL at first glance, but then it goes off the deep end. They don't just want the source code for the original software, or any modifications you've made to the software, or any derivatives of the software. They want the source code for every single piece of software involved in hosting that cloud service. According to the license, that includes, without limitation, management software, user interfaces, application program interfaces, automation software, monitoring software, backup software, storage software, and hosting software. Yup, if you've got backups of your servers, then they want the source code for the software you use to make the backup. Basically, Amazon, if you want to use this one thing, you need to provide the source code for the entirety of AWS. Forget about it being on the same medium. If it's in the same data center, the SSPL wants its source code. That is massive overreach. Amazon's complicated though. Let's take a simple scenario to better understand the problem. I'm gonna host an instance of Elasticsearch that I compiled from Elastic's SSPL code, and I'm gonna let you access it. This means I need to release a source to any code making up this platform. Let's see how far I get. I can't install Elasticsearch under thin air. It needs an operating system. Which shall I choose? Windows? Can't do that. I don't have the source code. And there is absolutely no way that Microsoft is gonna give it to me, let alone allow me to distribute it publicly. What about Linux? It's open source. Sure, but that's not what the SSPL says. It doesn't say make it open source. It says you must make the service source code available via network download to everyone at no charge, under the terms of this license. It wants me to relicense Linux under the SSPL. I don't own Linux. Linux is licensed under the GPL, which expressly forbids imposing further restrictions 
such as those in the SSPL. So this doesn't work. The service provider part of the SSPL makes no sense because it's not even possible to comply with when you can't install it unless your operating system is licensed using the SSPL and that operating system does not exist. Even if the SSPL allowed me to substitute in open source licenses when releasing code, which was once proposed, and assuming I could retool my entire data center stack to be open source, that's the operating system, hypervisor, management tools, storage software, monitoring software, backup software, etc, etc. What about the software my network switches run? What about the code in my UFI or BIOS? What about my CPU microcode or the firmware in my hard drives? I don't have the rights to any of this code. It's proprietary. How do I actually comply with this license as a service provider? I haven't found an answer. It looks like the right questions were asked about where the line gets drawn, but the discussion became heated, and people are more interested in having a fight than finding a solution. So MongoDB said, look, we don't want this. We're just going to walk away and give up on making this work as open source. Everyone chill, thanks for the feedback. Where this leaves us then is with a license that is seemingly impossible to comply with if you could potentially compete with the original company. It is essentially booby trapped. Open source is about giving people control of their software. This is about locking certain people out. So it's not open source. So what is my advice from all of this? If you're a user of free software, whether that's free as in price or free as in freedom, make sure you understand what the license does and does not let you do. Do not assume that because something is reported as open source, it actually is open source. Do not assume all open source licenses are the same. I'll have a video about that coming out soon, so make sure to subscribe. If in doubt, the Open Source Initiative has a searchable list of approved open source licenses. This is not necessarily a definitive list, because there are undoubtedly some licenses that meet the definition of open source that the OSI simply hasn't got around to reviewing. This is by the by though, it's more important that you understand the license you're accepting than it is for the OSI to approve it. You're the one who's going to be held accountable. If you're a software vendor, Stop calling things open source unless they meet the open source definition, because that's what everybody thinks you mean. Do not use misleading language like built as open source or built from open source when it isn't open source. In fact, just stop calling it open. The word open is sufficient to confuse people because their brain fills in the word source automatically. If you don't want people accusing you of open washing, just don't say open. Some companies like Redis are using the phrase source available. Open code is too close to open source code. Free and open is too close to free and open source. Source available is an accurate description and it doesn't use the word open, so it's much less likely to be mistaken for something it isn't. Another phrase I've heard recently is fair source, which basically seems to mean it's like open source, but with a non-compete clause. Use that. Isn't that what most of these companies are trying to do anyway? They want to share their code, they want people to contribute to their code, but they don't want to risk what they see as unfair competition using their code. My stance? Not all software has to be open source. Open source is fine. Proprietary is fine. Somewhere in between is fine. Just communicate clearly what you're doing and don't BS people. The point of this video is not that proprietary software is bad or that source available licenses are bad. It's that fake is bad. If people are installing your software thinking it's open source because of the way you presented it, and it's not actually open source, it's a fake. To use a very 90s analogy, you're basically doing the licensing equivalent of those Adidas tracksuits with four stripes. Now, if you want to know how confusing actual open source licenses can get, I'll stick that video up here as soon as it's ready. Like, subscribe, share, and let me know what you think in the comments.